Hi there, Acadia owners. Today in your 2019 GMC Acadia, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's Diode Wiring Kit. There's five main components you'll need when flat towing your vehicle behind your motorhome. You'll need your tow bar, which is the connection between your motorhome and your vehicle. You'll need your base plate, which is the connection point your tow bar is going to attach on your vehicle. You'll need your diode wiring, which is going to take all the lights on your motorhome and transfer them to the lights at the back of your vehicle. You'll need your safety cables, which is a supplemental connection in addition to your tow bar, as well as your braking system, which will apply the brakes in our vehicle when we hit the brakes in our motorhome. The diode wiring kit will provide diodes that go in between the lights on your vehicle and your vehicle's factory wiring. The diodes act as a one-way check valve for electricity, so that way when we send uh, the lighting signals from our motor home to the lights here at the back, it can only reach the bulbs to illuminate them, and it will not be able to backfeed into our system causing any damage to our wiring. It does work in the other order as well. If our vehicle were to illuminate the brake lights, it can't backfeed towards our motor home. This is nice because the lights on the back of our vehicle are going to mimic our motor home, and it's going to look just like they're operating from the factory. We don't need to have any additional components like magnetic lights on top, or a bulb and socket kit where it requires you to drill holes in your lights. The diodes are very clean, looks very factory, and they're very small so it's easy to install them behind your assemblies here. With your diode wiring installed, you're going to get your left turn signal, right turn signal, tail lamps and brake lamps, keeping you DOT compliant in all states. Right now I've got the flashers turned on in the motorhome so you can see that those will also function here. This will ensure that people behind you know your intentions when going down the road so you can have safer travels. Included with your kit, you're going to receive a cable that will have a six pole on one end to plug into the vehicle and a seven pole on the other to plug into your motorhome. You'll also receive your six pole connector here for the vehicle side to complete your wiring. You also get the wires that you'll need to run from the connector to the diodes at the back. So really you've got everything you need to get this up and running on your vehicle here. We'll begin our installation by removing both the driver and passenger side taillights. To do this, we'll use our flat bladed screwdriver to pop off the caps, exposing the screws. There's two on each side. We can then remove the screws beneath the caps with a seven millimeter socket. The tail out assembly will then just pull rearward to remove. Sometimes it can help to use a trim panel tool to help remove it because they can be quite tight sometimes. Once you've got it popped loose, there's a connector behind it. And this connector is typically attached right here. Sometimes it may have fallen off. We want to pull it off regardless, so if it is on there, just give it a little tug and pull it off. And then we can remove the lock tab here. We'll use our flat bladed screwdriver just to pop that up. And then we can push on the release tab here and disconnect the connector. Now that we've got our taillight assembly removed, we can take both the driver and passenger side over to our workbench where we'll install our diodes. The first thing we're going to need to do is separate the wiring so we can access them. We're going to be tapping into the red wire and the white wire, so we're just going to cut off the little pieces of electrical tape that are holding them together so we can easily cut them at the appropriate spot and then get them installed. We're just going to do this for each spot until all of our wires are separated. Now that we've got them separated out, I'm just going to untwist them to get our two wires we want out. We still need our connector in the end to clip back into its position so that way it'll reach the connector on the vehicle. So we're just going to choose the appropriate layout that we need them to be in now. Our diodes are here and we can remove all the ends from them. We're going to be sticking the diodes on the inside here. We can put one in this position and we can also put one in that position. Our tail light assembly has a bottom down here. You can tell by this little tab here where it locks in. That's the bottom. So that means our connector is going to face this direction. So the single tab will always goes towards the bulb 
So we can connect our white wire to one there, and then we'll connect our other white wire to the other side. We're just kind of determining where we can position them. Looks like that's going to be a pretty good position for us to be able to connect our wiring. So we can go ahead and cut the wire. It's also a good opportunity to separate that white wire out so you can maximize the length you've got. We're going to strip back each end of our white wire. And we're going to attach blue spade terminals to each end that we just stripped back. We will be doing the same thing with our red wire, but it's best to just do one at a time since it is a pretty tight fit behind the assembly. And this way we can make sure we've got them where we want them to where it's all gonna fit. So the bulb side, we're gonna plug in here. And we can see that that's gonna fit down there just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and take our white wire and plug it in to the other side. It doesn't matter which one of the two on this side we plug it into. And then we're just gonna verify our connector still reaches and it looks like everything's gonna line up fine there. So now we're just gonna move on to the red wire and do the same thing, placing the diode over here. So I've gone ahead and finished up the red wire here. You can see on the single side, we're going towards our connector here, which lights up our LEDs. And from our connector on the vehicle, we go to the side with two pins. At this point, you can stick them in place. There's an adhesive pad on the back. Just want to make sure you can still access the remaining prong after you stick them in place. So we're just sticking it on there, right there. And then we'll do the same thing with our red wire here. And actually with this one, I'm gonna move this one over because this one should be a little easier to access. After we peel off the backing on this one, we can just go ahead and stick it in place as well. And we can put our connector back where it belongs. And there we verified that everything's gonna fit. We've got everything tucked nicely inside the open cavities here, so our light assembly will snap back in place with ease. We're gonna do the exact same thing on our passenger side tail light, and then we can start running our wire up to the diodes and making those connections. We can start running our wire, but before we do, we want to isolate the green wire. So we're just gonna snip in between the yellow and the green, just like that. And that's going to let us peel back the green wire. And we're just gonna peel this back until we've got enough length to stay down below, but be able to pull all these wires up to where our driver's side taillight assembly is. We only need these three on our driver's side. This one we're gonna be routing over to the passenger side. So now I've taken the three wires we need to route to the driver's side and I taped them to a fish wire. The fish wire you can see here, I just fed down below. This is just easier to maneuver than your wire because it's flexible, but it's more rigid so you can get kind of a straight path down. You can use a metal coat hanger if you don't have a piece of airline tubing like this, but anything that's gonna be, again, just stiffer but still flexible. Once we've got it taped to it, we can pull our wires up to where we can start making our connections. We'll just cut the uh, tape we put on there off to get our wires back. Now that we're up here, we're going to separate the remaining three wires. Our yellow wire is going to be for the stop turn circuit for the driver's side. And the brown wire is for the tail lights we need this to be on both sides, so we're gonna be using a small portion of the white wire that comes with our kit to jumper the brown wire from this side over to the other side so the taillights work on both sides. The remaining white wire that we'll have on the rest is gonna be our ground wire that we'll be hooking up later. So now that we've got these separated, we can strip each one of them back. We're gonna be twisting the brown and white together. And on the ends of these wires, we're going to be crimping the remaining spade terminals. The only real difference here is that 
you have all blue spade terminals, but you'll get one yellow, and the single yellow is slightly larger inside diameter to accommodate the two wires that we're gonna be twisting together for our jumper. So here we're gonna use that yellow one for these. And then we'll use the blue one for our yellow wire here. At this point, we can connect these to our tail light assembly. The yellow wires for our stop turn, so that's gonna to go to the white wired circuit. So we're going to just plug that in right here onto that diode. They are quite tight, the two connectors, because they're very close together. So you are probably gonna to have to push pretty hard to get that guy to snap on there. It's gonna be the same with this one over here. It's actually even a little bit more difficult due to the yellow being slightly larger, the yellow spade terminal. But we're gonna take the brown and the white then and connect it to the red wire circuit, because that's our tail lights. And now that we've got that connection made, we can go ahead and zip tie up our wiring so that way it doesn't fall back down and we don't have any excess that could potentially hit the exhaust. I like to zip tie it to the factory connector here. So that way this extra wire, you can just poke down in there. So if anybody ever needs to take this taillight assembly out, they've got a little bit of room to work with. Just make sure I got all my slack up before cinching it down cut off our excess and then we can reinstall the tail light assembly so we're going to plug our electrical connector back in first it is a very tight fit and then this extra yellow wire we can just poke it right down in there and then just line up your tabs and push the whole assembly back into place. We can then reinstall the screws in our caps. And then we're going to be routing that green wire over to the other side along with a portion of that white wire. And we're gonna use the same fish wire trick to pull it up. I'll get this side button back up here and then we'll head underneath and I'll show you the path that I took to route it across. So this is where our wire comes down. We route it across. And you can see here towards the middle where our green wire and our white wire continue on and the rest of our wire kind of heads back over because we are going to route this down the driver's side going forward once we finish up back here. Now the white wire I did have to cut. You'll see that going back over we're missing white on this section. To determine how much white wire you need all I did was peel back the green, hold it over, to the passenger side and then I held it up to make sure I had enough green wire. And then once I knew how much green wire that I had to make sure it was gonna make it far enough, the point where I had peeled it back to, I just took the green wire from there and I just held the extra length that I had and just followed it down the wire until it ended. That's where I cut my white wire so that way my green wire and white wire are the same length. And then just continue routing them over, zip tying it to any factory wiring along the way. So our factory wiring is going to be in a location that's going to be away from our exhaust. So we don't have to worry about it melting. Once we got it routed over to this side, we used our fish wire trick again over here to pull the wiring up to that taillight assembly mounting area. And here I got my green and white wire pulled up. I went ahead and put the spade terminals on them and then made the connections to the diodes. You can see that the green wire, which is our stop turn, went to the white wire diode, just like we did on the other side. And our white wire is an extension of that brown wire and that goes to the circuit that's tied into our red wire for our taillights. We've gone ahead and put this side back in place. So we finished all the wiring here at the back of the vehicle. We now need to take the rest of our wire and route it towards the front. We're also gonna hook up our ground wire while we're doing that. So here we are underneath. I've routed the wire to the front. I was gonna show you the path I took. I'm zip tying it to factory wiring along the way. The first thing I did though, when heading forward is I went above the heat shield here to stay away from the heat of our exhaust. We stay on top of the heat shield till we come out the back side of the heat shield here. From there, we go up above our rear suspension and we stay above the rear suspension until we come out the other side. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is here's our white wire where we had cut it. This is our ground wire. So we're gonna go ahead and make the connection while we're down here. And this is a great place to do so because there's a bolt right there and we can use that as our uh, ground connection point. 
So we're gonna go ahead and strip back the white wire and then attach the ring terminal to it. And this does not necessarily need to go in this position. It can go really anywhere along the frame as long as it's grounded. We're then just gonna use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the single bolt there. We'll slide our ring terminal on the bolt and then we're just gonna reinstall it. And there's our ground connection. So we're gonna continue routing our wire forward now. Once we get over our suspension notch hooking up the ground wire, we are gonna run it down the side of our fuel tank. And there's actually already fuel lines and brake lines routed here. And there are open slots in some of these. So we just stuck our wire in the open slot and just routed it down going into those open slots along the way. Once we get to the front of the fuel tank, we run out of open slots. So we route it above the charcoal canister. When we come out the other side of the charcoal canister, we zip tie it to the factory wiring located here and then just continue going forward. We stay above any of our lines when doing so to keep our wire up off the ground. When we get to our subframe here, we just went ahead and zip tied it to the subframe. Now, depending on the braking system you have, you may want to change the routing of your wiring. Our customer had an Air Force One system, which does not need to tap into the wiring to make its braking system connections. But if you have something like the Stay and Play Duo or an Invisibrake, you will need to tap into this wiring. So from this point, you would want to route it up to the engine compartment to give you easy access for your braking system. If you have a braking system that doesn't need to tap into these wiring though, you can just follow us along down the subframe. We just zip tie it to the subframe as we go forward. Once we get to the front of the subframe there, we just go ahead and poke it through an opening right there that brings us out to the front behind our fascia. From there, we just routed it along our base plate until it comes over and poked it through the opening here at the front. This is where we can start making our connections. Now there, this plastic here is likely gonna need to be trimmed out some in order for our connector to fully be inserted. So you can just use a pair of snips to trim that out if we have any interference. I highly suspect that we are gonna have to make some small trims to that area. So I've gone ahead and taken the connector and held it up here to see that it is going to hit on the fascia there, so we are gonna to have to trim it out. This is where our base plate has a mounting location for our wiring, so that's why we routed it to here. So we're just gonna trim this out. We're just gonna use our snips just to trim this out behind it. Now that we've got a nice opening there. We're just gonna make sure that it's gonna fit. And it does go all the way up against our mounting location there. So we can go ahead and start making our connections. Included with your kit, you are gonna get a bracket. This is a mounting bracket for your six pole here. You may or may not need this depending upon your install. Since ours has mounting locations on the base plate, we really don't need this bracket but since we're using an Air Force One braking system, this bracket makes a great bracket to add additional components because we're gonna be installing it just like that, right behind our connector. And that gives us an L bracket here to make our mounting location for our braking system components. So we can now start making our connections. I do like to leave some excess wire just in case you wanna add any additional components or need to make repairs in the future. Just wanna be able to pull it out so you can access the back. So this will be far enough to do so. So we're just gonna trim it right there. And then we're going to separate each wire. Once you've got all of your wires separated, you'll want to strip each one of them back. And if you're wondering what the black hose is here, this is for our braking system. It's gonna hook onto that piece on our bracket there. So now we're gonna take each of these and twist them so we can poke them into our connector. Before we hook it to the connector though, you need to take the boot that comes in your kit and you wanna slide it on first before making those connections. We'll then need to start loosening the screws for all of our connection points. We're gonna be using the one labeled LT for left turn, which is our yellow wire. One labeled GD for ground, which is the white wire. The one labeled TM, 
which is your tail lights, which is going to be our brown wire. And then lastly, we want RT, which is right turn, which is going to be our green wire. We'll then just take each of the wires and we're just going to poke them into their respective location and then tighten the screw back down. So we'll just repeat that for all the remaining ones. So here we've got all of our connections made. Again, green was LT for left turn, yellow RT for right turn, white GD for ground, and brown TM for tail. We'll then seal it all up with some dielectric grease. And this is going to keep out any moisture to ensure a long lasting connection. And it's okay to go pretty generous with it because we want to keep all that moisture out. We'll slide our boot over our connections. And then what I like to do is use a little bit of electrical tape around the front and back of the boot just to further seal it up and keep our boot on there. We can now go ahead and mount our connector. You don't need this bracket again. We're gonna be using it for our braking system. So we're gonna slide our bolts through. And on the other side, you don't necessarily need it. We're using it mainly for our braking system that we've got here. But we're gonna put a few washers on the back to space it out a little further. And that's mainly for clearance down here on the braking system parts. But if you feel that it sits a little close and you want it to be a little more easy to access, you can add a couple of spacers in there too. We're just gonna be using some washers for spacers. And then we can just run the self tappers into our mounting bracket that comes on our base plate. Now that we've got it fully connected here, we can go ahead and plug it into our RV or to a tester and make sure everything's working properly. I've gone ahead and plugged our tester in so we can make sure everything's working. You want to make sure that you have your tail lights, your brake lights, your left turn signal, as well as your right turn signal. With everything working properly, you can look over your wiring and zip tie up anything that's a little bit loose, and then you're ready to pack it up and hit the road. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's Diode Wiring Kit on our 2019 GMC Acadia.